Okay, so welcome to week two, everyone. Um, let's start by giving everyone a quick uh, review of what we started off with last week. So we have discussed that coding is a set of instructions that a computer will follow, and that for doing our programming today, we will need a web browser, as well as a notebook, a pencil, and possibly a parent slash guardian. So um, while we're going through this review, if you could go ahead and get the, those things, that would be great. And just as always, you can type in the chat or unmute if you have any questions. And the slides and recording will be available for your review later. And another thing that we did last week was code blocks. So we talked about how the code blocks can be found on the block palette which is on the left side of your screen. Um, and then we chose the cat, which is at the bottom right. We placed it in the yellow events option area. Um, we chose a yellow events option when five click button, which we learned was a trigger, if anyone remembers. And we talked about how it was very similar to a play button, whether it be like on a game or on YouTube or just anywhere you might see a play button. And we also talked about stack blocks. So does anyone remember what a stack block was? You can feel free to type in the chat or unmute. Okay, um, that's fine. I can go ahead and kind of review that. So um, if not, they could point to it. The, at the bottom of the screen, we have a move 10 steps block. And at the bottom, if you see, there's a little bump. So that's something that you'll find in every stack block. And at the top, there's a notch. And that's also something you'll find in every stack block. So it just has a notch and a bump. And make sure you do remember this because if we have time, we would love to have a quick quiz in the end. And this information could be very useful then. All right, so the next thing we're going to be covering is testing. So programs run from top to bottom, meaning that the commands at the top get executed first and then at the bottom. So if you give someone a set of five instructions, it'll follow the first instruction, they'll follow the first one first, and then the second, and the third, the fourth, etc. So the same way programs will follow the first instruction, the one at the very top, and then slowly start to move down. So for example, first the flag will be clicked, then the paddle turns right 15 degrees, and then the paddle moves 10 steps. And that'll be the order that the program will follow if you give it that order. Um, so now a quick correction to something that we misspoke about last week. So um, last week, I believe we were talking about um, reporter blocks. Yeah, it was for reporter blocks. And we said that both rounded and hexagonal blocks are reporter blocks. However, this is false. Only the rounded blocks, like mouse X, are reporter blocks. Um, the hexagonal blocks are actually called something else, and we'll be covering that today. And just like last week, if the white line or glow appears, then the block can be placed, which you can see on the bottom left. And if there is no glow around it, then the block cannot be placed there. Um, and so now we want to quickly cover something. Um, so for starting next week, we are going to do our final project. And these are projects in which you can work in a team and you will make either a piano, a game, which is catching, catching the apples, or a maze runner. So does someone from each team want to speak about um, kind of what their category is? Uh, I can start. So we're going to be doing the Catching Apples game, which you can see is at the top right corner. And basically, this is a game where you're going to have apples that are falling from the sky. And you're going to have a little basket, and your goal is to try to catch as many apples as you can. And once we build that basic part, we can start adding additional apples. We can add multiple baskets. We can add a point system. We can really just change and adapt the game as we want. Um, 
Um, is anyone from the Maze Runner here, if you want to talk about that? Uh, I can talk about the Maze Runner as well. So uh, for the Maze Runner, basically, as you can see, you're going to design your own maze on Scratch. And then you're going to program a small game where the user can navigate themselves through the maze. So you're basically going to have a, uh, you're going to create a maze game. So you're going to have a little icon. As you can see, there's an apple uh, on the screen. But you can make it whatever you want. And then uh, you're going to take the user through the game. And we're going to learn the different commands. Like if they run into a wall, what's going to happen? If they make it to the end, what's going to happen? Or if they go the wrong route, what's going to happen? We'll program these different situations. It'll end up with a super fun maze game. Uh, Sahiti, you're on mute. Sorry about that. So I'll talk about the piano. The piano, it's just kind of like your regular piano. If you really love music or just sound, then you'd probably really enjoy this. So we're going to be making a full octave of one piano. And if we have extra time, we can also go into changing the volume, changing the, the pitch, making more octaves, and even changing the instrument. So um, those are the three options that we have for you guys. Um, we're going to ask that everyone fills out the form that we're going to place in the chat. So um, it will ask you for your name and which project you're interested in doing. If you guys could please fill that out with whichever project you're interested in doing, that would be great. And we will organize you into groups for next week. So we'll give you around a few minutes to do that. And once you're done with that, please let us know by typing done in the chat. Yeah, try to fill out the form as uh, fast as you can because I think uh, each game will fill up pretty quickly. But it's okay even if you don't get the game that you pick because all of them are super fun games and you're probably going to learn a lot and you're going to build something super cool. Wait, I seven of you turned in the form on my end. Mm. Um, so if you haven't gotten to turn it in, no worries. Please do fill it out as soon as possible, which will because it will really help us. Um, I think probably if you're able to finish it by tonight, that would be best. Um, and yeah, mm. yeah. So far, um, we have okay. We have Irene, uh, Kaya. Abiram, Nicholas, Joel, Yifan, Lasia, and Aishwe will fill out the form. All right. So it looks like most of you filled it out. I think maybe there are one or two people who still need a little more time. So you can work on that anytime today, like Sahiti said. Yeah. Um, Sahiti, can you fill Uh, the steps to find your project from here are shown in the image below. Uh, you can type it down in chat once you, once you find it. Um, you might not have the same game as, it might not be called Pong Game, but it was just whatever project we opened up last week and we told you to title it. Um, what You can just reopen that up and we'll continue. 
I think we actually did finish it, but um, we just kind of want you to get into the habit of knowing how to open and close projects. So I just think there'll be like a quick refresher from last week of what we did. Oh, if you weren't here last time, then no worries about this step. Um, it's not that important for what we're doing today. It's just a quick refreshment of what happened last time. Um, but whoever said they weren't here last time in the chat, do you have a Scratch account or do you still need to make one? Please let us know once you've signed in by typing done in the chat. Irene, for the purpose of this workshop, we'll actually be guiding you through your games. But if you want to make your own game outside of our workshops and you want us to review over it or look over it, we'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, so it looks like most people are finishing up opening the project. So I think we can move on. All right. Um, so this, these are the different block categories. And so you guys probably see this on your screen. On the very left side of your screen, you probably see these weird circles in different colors. And under each circle, there's a different word. So you'll have motion, look, sound, events. And so these are the, uh, these each of these circles has different uses. So basically you can try this out right now, but if you click on the different, uh, different colored circles, it'll actually open a new set of blocks. So if you click on the blue circle, it'll open up all of these blue blocks. And if you click on the green one, it'll open up a bunch of green blocks over here. And so we're gonna teach you all what each of these categories is and kind of what they do. And there's going to be at the ga a game at the end, so make sure that you take notes and really uh, understand all of this information. I'll explain it, I guess. Uh, so, motion is used for like the movement of sprites, which are the characters in Scratch. And for us, um, this is run, jump, turn, and more. And it can be in the form of both stack blocks or reported blocks, as seen in the example four. Um, if you guys are, um, that is a great time to take notes, um, and please do make sure you're understanding it because we will have a fun game at the end to kind of test your knowledge. So, um, if you need some time to write notes, that's totally fine. Just let us know when you're done.
Um, is there anyone else who still needs a little bit more time to take any notes? Okay. Looks like a couple of people are finishing up. Uh, I'll leave this light on for another like minute or so and then we can move on. And at any point, if you guys feel like we're going too fast for you, do let us know and we can slow down a little. All right, um, let me move on to the next slide. We can move back uh, if anyone later needs this information. Um, all right, so does anyone know what looks are? Uh, it doesn't have to be in terms of coding, but just in general. When we're talking about looks, does anyone know what we're talking about? You can put it in the chat or you can unmute. What looks is a category. Look yes. at the for which alters a, a sprite's look. Exactly, that's perfect. Yes, like uh, Joyce said, how you look. Exactly. So looks are, all three of you are absolutely correct. Looks are category in Scratch. They do have to do with sprites. And uh, looks are basically how someone appears to the outside. So... Basically, uh, like all of you said, it looks are basically what we see about the sprites and or backdrop in Scratch. So for example, uh, clothes in real life might be costumes in Scratch, speech or dialogue, color, background, all of these would come under looks. Alrighty. And so now these are the different looks blocks. Remember looks is purple. So the looks blocks are always purple and they just have to do with how your sprites and your backgrounds look. So uh, as we went over last time, let me go to the previous slide. You see blocks that look like this are called stack blocks, which is basically which basically means you can stack them on top of each other. Whereas reported blocks, you can't stack on top of each other. They look like this. So now we'll give you guys a little question. So in these ones, we have uh, these blocks and we have these blocks. So one and two. So do you guys know which one of these are stack blocks, meaning you can stack them on top of each other and which ones are reported blocks? You can type it in the chat or you can unmute if you know. The first one is reporter. The second one is stack. Perfect. And I'm seeing. Okay, I see Joyce and Lassia also mentioned in the chat. Yes, you guys are right. So stack blocks, number two uh, are stack blocks, and number one is uh, reporter blocks. So all three of you are absolutely right. So the next category is sound. Um, I'm assuming most of you know what sound is. So if you know anything about sound, feel free to unmute or type in the chat. Music and sound. Yes, music is sound. That's very good. Sound is waves that come to your ear. Yeah, it's very advanced. It is. They are sound waves that will come to your ear. Very good. So um, we can talk a little bit more on the slide. Um, so sounds, you guys had it so much better than what we put, but um, they're basically different sounds are called audio. And these can be pitch, these can be differences in pitch, in pitch or volume or anything. And Scratch has many sounds, but you can also include your own sounds if you don't like Scratch's sounds. And I saw someone in the chat put the music or sound effects. Yes, music and sound effects are all parts of sound. 
So this time, since you have your scratch screen open already, um, if you can go to the um, the sounds block, which is the third one from the top, oh. and you can go ahead and look and try to find some stack and recorder blocks, um, and then put them in the chat. We can review over them and look at if they're right. So go ahead and switch to your scratch screen, and um, the I think there it's kind of light purple, and it's a third category. So you guys can go ahead and um, either pick a uh, stack or a reporter block and put mm -hmm. it in the chat and explain which one you think it is. Then we can look over those answers. So I'll give everyone around a minute to do that. And if you want to unmute and let us know also um, what you think the stack block is and what you think a reporter block is, that's fine as well. All right, does anyone want to share what reporter and stack blocks they found? Let me share this to anyone in the chat. I see move 10 steps, and um, that would be a reporter block, or sorry, a stack block. Um, but we can show you some examples that we found in R. So these aren't all of them, but these are just some of them. We have volume, which is a circle one. So that would automatically make it a reporter block. Um, start sound and volume, yes, those are both reporter blocks. And then stop all sound is an example of a step block. All right, next we're going to be covering events. So once again, let's think to real life one time. Do any of you know what an event is in real life? You can put it in the chat or you can unmute. I know it's a little bit hard to describe, but I'm sure a lot of you know what events are. Perfect. Like Joyce said, events are what happens. So events are just something that happens. And in Scratch, Events are basically triggers. So I'm not sure if any of you remember what we talked about last week. Yes, Lassia, that's right. Events are in yellow. So you both are absolutely right. And so events are triggers, meaning that they start something. So you can kind of think of them as like traffic lights. I'm not sure how many of you know uh, a lot about traffic lights, but you know that uh, when you have a green traffic light, your car or your vehicle is supposed to move forward. Whereas when you have a red one, it's supposed to stop. So your event will basically tell you when the traffic light is green, you're supposed to move forward. So similarly, in Scratch, it's like when something happens, something else happens. So for example, when flag clicked, start the program. And so in events, you have hat and stack blocks. So again, stack blocks are ones uh, where you have a little hole at the top and a little bump at the bottom, and you can stack them on top of each other. Whereas hat blocks have this little pop up at the top. So they have this little hat at the top. And hat blocks are the start of the program. So anytime you ever have a hat block, it needs to be at the very beginning of your program because you can't put anything on top of a hat block. You can only put things under. And hat blocks usually start something. So hat blocks are like when flag clicked, then execute the program. Or when the space key is pressed, then run this program. So I'll keep the screen up for a minute in case anyone needs to take notes on this.
All right, uh, let me move on to the next slide since it looks like we've got to Okay, so uh, next we're going to go over control. Um, so someone can unmute if they know, does anyone know what, like, control, what it means to control? Control. Control blocks are like loops and weight blocks. Yeah, that's, that's right. So that's good. Um, so control blocks basically control and decide uh, what happens in the project and they're based on uh, many different things for example if something happens then you would run another portion of your code or until something until a condition is fulfilled you can run uh, a certain portion of your code and there are many more examples um and control is in the form of um hat blocks c blocks stack blocks or cap blocks um, so can you guess what the um, blocks below are called? It's re repeat until also known as loops and stop. Uh, that, that's what they do, but the specific name is like the ones listed above. The one on the left is a C block, and the one on the right is a cap block because it caps or stops the code. Or if you want to be very specific, you could just say the actual name of the block. All right, so uh, do does anyone here know what sensing means? You can put it in the chat or uh, you can unmute. Like, what does it mean to sense something? Well, to know that something's there and sensing blocks are like, you, like the, I can't, like the block, like, uh, I can't see the, type name but like the block username where it senses the username yeah exactly so sensing is basically to uh see or observe that something is there so good job uh i sure you said it's one of the block palettes exactly yes sensing is i think the green uh, palette so both of those are absolutely correct uh sensing basically means to detect something so for example if you have two sprites touching you can sense one of the sprites. So for example, if you have a paddle and a ball, you can program the paddle to sense whether the ball is there. And you can also program one of your sprites, for example, the ball, you can program your ball to sense whether it's touching blue or touching red or touching purple. Now sensing consists of stack blocks, Boolean blocks, or reporter blocks. And just as a piece of reference, a Boolean basically refers to true and false stuff. So as you can see below, uh, these are different conditions that can either be true or false. So uh, if something is touching something else, that might be true or false, touching color red, if green is touching blue, etc. And Boolean blocks are in a hexagon shape. So as you can see, these are in a hexagon shape, these true or false blocks. I'll leave the screen up for a minute so that you guys can take any notes and kind of soak this information in. And you can let me know in the chat when you're ready to move on. Oh, yeah, somebody said they need to go back to control um, so I can uh, put up that screen for a minute. Okay. Uh, let me know when you're ready to move on. All right. Uh, let's um, move on.
So the next category that we'll be talking about are operators. And I know operators can be pretty much anything, but does anyone have even a little bit of an idea of what operators could be? It's perfectly okay if you don't as well. I know operators. I can't remember. I just need to check the Splash projects again. Yeah, it's totally fine. We can explain actually. So an operator in Scratch oh, has yeah. a so it's not always in real life, it might not be like that, but in Scratch, his option has to be math. And there are two types of operators. There are Boolean blocks and there are reporter blocks. So the Boolean blocks, like we just talked about, are the ones that can result in yes or no, which are true and false. So this time, can you go to your um, operators uh, palette and find a reporter and Boolean block. And once you find either of those, um, please type their name in the chat or unmute and tell us what block you found and what you think it is. We'll give you a few minutes to go ahead and try. I remember the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division sign. And what sort of blocks do you think those would be? Those would be a reporter block. That's a very good guess. Um, the and block and the join block. And what do you think those are? I think those are booleans. Okay. Um. Those. Some of those. Oh, a boolean block is something that's either true or false. So, for example, if it's does two plus two equal four, it's either true, which is yes, or false, which is no. So, since two plus two does equal four, the answer would be yes, which is false. Yes, the and blocks. Um, and what do you think the and blocks would be? Um, do you think they would be reporter blocks or Boolean blocks? No. Boolean blocks. So um, we can go ahead and reveal some of the ones that we thought of. We thought of a lot of the ones that you guys found too. So for example, I remember someone was talking about the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Those are all reporter blocks, like you said. And the and blocks, the or blocks, the less than, greater than, all of those are called Boolean blocks. And for the person who asked if uh, what a Boolean block is, does that make more sense or do you want us to re-explain? Oh, okay. All right, so now we're going to be covering variables. And once again, does anyone know what a variable is? It doesn't necessarily have to be in programming. It can be in math. It can be anything you've learned before. Um, but if you do know what a variable is, you can put it in. Or changes. Exactly. In the box that sort of information, the example that everybody uses. That's a very good explanation, yes. So... Essentially, a variable stores information that can be changed, just like Colin mentioned. So, for example, we might have a variable called score, and every variable stores a particular value. So we can say that score is equal to zero, and later we can change that to score is equal to one or score is equal to two. All right, so now we're going to give you guys a little you try activity. So your goal is to make a list and a variable. And you're going to see what happens. So first, on your screen, you have to press make a variable and then name the variable whatever you want. It's up to you. Uh, let us know in the chat when you're done. Uh, so just press make a variable and then uh, give the variable a specific name. And so we just want to get you guys to practice the process of making and using variables.
for those of you who are able to make that, um, you can start on the next step, which is to follow these same instructions to make a list. So there will be a make a list option and you can click on that. So I see someone put done in the chat. What did you, what did you see happen when you made that variable or you made a list? You can unmute. It. That several blocks up here. Yeah, you got a bunch more blocks that you didn't have earlier. But also, there's a standard my variable that appears when you create every function. All right, is there anyone still working on this step or are you all ready to move on? You can let us know in the chat or you can unmute. Okay, I think we can move on unless anyone says otherwise. So now we're going to talk about my blocks. So Scratch has so many blocks, but sometimes we just don't have the block that we really want. And so in that case, you can actually make your own block. So this concept can be a little bit confusing at first, so we won't go too in depth. But um, for those of you who have some experience with coding, what do you think is happening in this piece of code? Do you want to explain it to some of your peers? Um, let's, it moves a hundred steps, it waits two seconds, and it moves 95 seconds. Yeah, so, um, yeah, what so we did again. yeah, so what we did was we made our own variables almost called steps and wait. And we're giving those the values 102. So if not, get the point to the 102. So the 100 is the amount of steps that we are assigning and the two is the amount of weight that we are assigning. So when we say move steps, steps, it automatically takes that 100 and puts it there. So it's moving 100 steps, like Colin said. And then wait, wait seconds. So the weight is being replaced by two. So it would move two seconds. And then we're going to move um, minus steps minus five steps. So 100 minus 5 would be 95 um, steps. So um, I think we have a quick moment if I could share my screen and kind of show you guys what that program looks like. Okay. It's also in case you guys are a little bit confused about this. This is kind of a more advanced coding concept. We're just letting you guys know, but you don't have to perfectly like memorize all of this. This was my program. So when I press the green flag, did you guys see how it moved? So if I press it another time, it moved again. So that's basically what it's just doing. It's just moving out of the screen. So hopefully that kind of helped. So the next thing we're going to be covering are extension categories. We're not going to go too deep into these because they're kind of specific to what projects you're trying to do. But these are extra code blocks. And some of the important ones include music, pen, video sensing, text-to-speech translate, makey-makey, go direct force, and acceleration. And these are kind of random, but um, they're kind of specific to certain projects and uh, certain programs. So it depends on the project that you're involved in and what you're trying to build. So we'll go deeper into them when you're in your smaller groups next week. So for example, if you were to make that a piano, you would probably need to use music. So we know we covered a lot of content this class. So do any of you have any questions on anything? 
Uh, you can let us know either through the chat, you can unmute, whatever works best with you. I'm interested in the direct force acceleration. What devices do you need to use that? Um, I think it would just be mostly direct force and acceleration on your screen. And you can probably link external the materials. These aren't all of the um, categories. So there are other um, like robots that you can almost link to Scratch. So I'm sure that they would use those in there as yeah, well. Yeah, I used EV3 once. Yeah. So, but um, the cables are very limited, so I didn't get to do a lot. Yeah, so you could probably use direct force and accelerate. Mm -hmm. Um, and everyone, just as a reminder, if you haven't chosen which program you're interested in doing next week, please do make sure you do that. I can put the link in the chat another time. Yeah, make sure you guys fill this out or else we're going to have to randomly assign you one project for next week. Yeah. <laughs> How do you make the game? Um, so uh, basically next week, we're, what we're going to do is uh, you see the form that Sahiti put in the chat. So there are some different options for games on that. And next week, what we're going to do is based on the type of game you chose to make, we're actually going to put you in smaller groups and we're going to assign each of you a different teacher and they're going to kind of take you through the steps of making that game. So they'll give you like a detailed explanation and then you'll be able to make some changes to your game. So we'll do all of the detailed instruction uh, the next two weeks when we're going to focus completely on that. And then if we have time on the very last day, we might maybe ask a couple of students who are interested if they want to show us their games. But that's completely optional. It's up to you if you're interested in showing other people what you've made. All right. It looks like there aren't too many questions right now. So let me stop sharing my screen. And also, I know we mentioned we were, um, but due to time constraints, I think we can push uh, the game for next week. So make sure you hang on to your notes um, just because we will need them next week. And you can always feel free to look through them, not just next week, but in the future also, these notes will be very useful. Yeah. So next week, right as soon as we start, we'll do the game. And then uh, we'll put you guys into your groups and you guys can start making your own projects. Um, so does anyone else have any questions or anything they want to talk about? If not, uh, as long as you guys filled out the form, uh, you are free to. Leave. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone. Make sure you fill out that form so we can assign you the project that you like. Bye.